Welcome back. In the last series of videos, which featured um, Melissa Kinney talking about the, the PROACT or structured decision making approaches to environmental decision making, uh, I want to dive into uh, a bit more of a mathy topic when it comes to decision making of the idea of constrained optimization. So, so in the structured decision making framework, we were envisioning the case where you have multiple objectives and different categorical scenarios. Here we're going to dive into the a simpler case where we just have one objective, one thing that we're trying to maximize or minimize, and a con but where we have a continuum of trade-offs to consider instead of just some discrete categories. Um, but otherwise, they're very related problems. So the, the idea in constrained optimization is you want to minimize or maximize some objective function, some objective in a usually often in the case of some decision analysis, subject to one or more constraints. So we're treating these as, as constraints, not as alternative objectives. So there's one thing we're minimizing and maximizing, but we have rules about what acceptable solutions are to that problem. And these other constraints will appear in this class of problems as inequalities. So, um, you know, constraints on your budget, constraints on your time, constraints on, uh, you know, acceptable solutions to, to other ob objectives. Uh, to, to, I'm going to start diving into this, starting with a kind of a, a non-environmental problem, but a, a simple one to understand, which is known as the classic student's dilemma, a decision problem. And this is a, a constraint optimization problem that is about mm -hmm. trying to pass your finals. So imagine you have finals in French and calculus and you need 50 more points in both classes uh, to pass. You expect to get 40 without additional help. So question is, you know, how do you get that additional help and what are the trade-offs involved? So for French, there's a language lab you can go to that costs $5 an hour and you expect to get 10 points of improvement per three hours of studying, uh, but you have a mental capacity and you know you won't spend more than eight hours uh, studying French before you kind of stop seeing improvement. Uh, for calc, you could go to a math tutor that's more expensive, $15 an hour, uh, but provides a, a greater return on investment in terms of time, 10 points of improvement per two hours of studying. Uh, but a lower limit on how much your brain can absorb. You're going to stop improving after seven hours. Furthermore, you might have an overall budget constraint of only having $100 total to spend and only 11 hours of time available. So the question then becomes, how do you solve this problem? How do you uh, pass both of your classes given the constraints of cost and time. And uh, as we'll also see, ma maximum amount of time you can spend on each subject, as well as minimum amount of time that you have to spend on each in order to pass. So when we think about how we tackle this sort of constrained optimization problem, there's a couple of key steps. The first is to identify the key variables. And that's essentially, what are the things you can control in this situation? Or another way of thinking about it, what are the knobs you can turn in this problem? So in the case of the, the student's dilemma, what we have control over is the amount of time we spend studying French versus the amount of time we have spending studying calculus. Those are what we control. We then need to define our objective in terms of these variables. And that's often kind of specifically quantify this in terms of an objective function. So we might say, you know, we wanna write down a function that involves our two grades uh, and what it is that we want to maximize. So it may be, and there's, there's different options here. I mean, you might say, you know, your goal is to maximize the total score across the two grades subject to the constraint that you pass both classes. It might be that you want to maximize, you might want to give one class more weight than other because it might be more important to you um, and to what you're trying to achieve. So it's perfectly fine to think about 
you know, weighting those two things differently. But we would write down some equation that expresses how we value uh, these two things and, and what it is we're trying to maximize or minimize. We then need to write down the constraints on these variables, and we'll end up writing these down as inequalities. And so we're going to say, you know, we have a constraint of our total budget, we have a constraint of our total time, total hours for each thing that we are willing to spend, minimum hours on each thing that we have to spend. And, you know, only solutions that fall within those inequalities really solve the problem. And so once we've summarized these steps, we need to uh, go through actually optimizing this objective function given the constraints. So really of, of these four steps, three of them are about setting up the problem and the fourth is about plugging through the math. And honestly, if you if you can set up the problem, the plugging through the math is, is going to be uh, at least uh, relative to some of the other things we do in this class, it's, it's one of the, uh, it's a, probably a less daunting task. So in this case, what are our key variables? As I alluded to earlier, the things that we have control over in the student's dilemma are the amount of time we spend on each, uh, on studying each of these two subjects. So well, let's call X the hours we're gonna study French and Y the hours we're gonna study calculus. <clears throat> so then what's our objective? Uh, we're going to allocate time and money to, to get the highest possible total grade without failing either course and accounting for calendar, budget, and attention span. So that's not the only objective you could have written down. Like I said, you could have weighted these two things differently. But if, my, if I say that what I want to maximize is the total grade, I would write down an objective function for the total grade. So the total grade is my French grade plus my calc grade. I currently have a 40 in each of these, but I can increase my uh, French grade at uh, 10 points per three hours. And I can increase my uh, calc grade at 10 points per two hours or you know, five points per hour. So this gives us uh, an equation for the overall uh, grade. And so now we wanna, that's the thing we want to in this case, maximize. You can also set up constrained optimization problems to minimize things. So we have our key objectives, we have our, our key variables, our objectives, and now we need to write down our constraints. And we're gonna specifically write them down as inequalities. So first of all, there's a minimum score you need to get to pass. And we said that that's a constraint um, because you could have solutions that maximized uh, the problem you know, maximize your total grade that resulted in you failing one of the classes. So you need to spend at least three more hours on French to get that up to 50 points. You need to spend at least two more hours on calc to get that up to 50 points. The total amount of time, x plus y, has to be less than or equal than 11 hours because that's the amount of time you have allocated. Um, you have these mental constraints. So X has to be less than eight, Y has to be less than seven, because those were the points where you said, after that, you stop seeing improvement. And then you have this financial constraint. So the cost per hour of French times the hours of French, plus the cost per hours of uh, math tutoring times the hours of math tutoring have to be less than my total budget of 100. Cool, so that's that kind of is how we overall set up the problem. Um, so I'm gonna wrap up this video. In the next video, we're gonna dive into how we actually do that optimization, how we actually constrain this problem.